joins us right now with his findings. And Janet, it's good to see you. Good to see you. All right, so let's talk about this. I, I saw some news report over the weekend where 76% of people said they'd like to stay away from malls versus 75 percent who said they'd like to stay away from public transportation. I don't know, you kind of weigh being in a crowded subway car versus being in a Macy's. I think I might take the latter. But what did you see over the weekend as you were out and shopping and uh, checking things out? Well, let's say I was on Metro North and the subway and in two <laughs> malls. So I guess, you know, my <laughs> odds are like zero of getting through this. But the malls were empty. Yeah. I was down at Hudson Yard. I was at Danbury Fair. And, you know, empty is a pejorative term, but it was very light as far as the people that were there. I was also at Costco and Stop and Shop, and it was literally the busiest I've ever seen the Costco I was in, and it's never busy at the end of February. I mean, it's like very normal at the end of February. You're supposed to be able to drive in and park. There's supposed to be shopping carts. There was neither. I literally had to drive around the parking lot till somebody pulled out to park. That's never happened to me in all the trips I've ever made to this particular Costco, including at Christmas and Thanksgiving. It's not just that Costco. There were reports over the weekend it, everywhere. It was all the Hawaii Costcos. Hawaii to the West Coast to the East Coast. They were, there were people were out and stocking up. I, I guess that's a normal consideration when people start to get fearful. They want to make sure they stock up in case there are, 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 are supply issues down the road. And it was also Walmart and Target. And the Stop and Shop was just decimated. Like, every cleaning product out of the aisle, gone. But there was the same story at Costco. Literally, they were buying rice, packaged rice, at such a rate that the shop people, or people who were stocking the store, bring it out, park it in the aisle instead of putting it on the shelves, and people were just putting it in their carts. And every cart, when I got there, was gone. When you, all the carts are gone at Costco, that's a pretty busy day. So, so it was pretty amazing. What, what does that mean? I mean, this is a, a dramatic few days that you're going to see people stocking up. Does this actually matter to the bottom lines of any of these companies? Oh, I don't think this is a few days. I think you're going to see this go on for a long time. Remember 2009 when we had the swine flu, HN, H1N1? Vaguely. 60 million people in America were, come, came down with the swine flu over a one-year period. Mm -hmm. 275,000 of them got hospitalized and 12,000 of them, 13,000 of them died. Mm -hmm. This thing may not look like that, but right now people think it's going to look like that. We could see this stocking up going on for quite a while because this could cycle through as each new part of the country comes under the... What does that mean for the supply chain, just in terms of this becoming a self-fulfilling prophecy? If people are out stocking up, then it means that the shortages are more likely to happen. Yeah, it's like when everybody filled their tank with gas back in 1973, right? And all the gas was gone. It was all in people's tanks of their cars. We're going to see that. The stores I was in, literally, I asked people, the children's aisle was, the children's um, aisle for flu and cough and cold medicine was completely gone. There was nothing there. So I asked, are you bringing more out from the back? And they said, we don't have any more to bring out from the back. When I got to the pasta aisle, only organic expensive pasta was left. All the regular pasta was gone. So I said, are you bringing it out from the back? Nope, it's just whatever's here is what's here. So will they replenish? Sure. But the supply chains will get strained. And we also know that some things that come out of China, the supply chain's already strained. And so we're going to see more and more of that. But it, it's just an interesting phenomenon. When we talked to Walmart about what was happening in China, remember, they kept all their stores open. So they had a really good database. They said the mix of what people bought completely changed and deliveries skyrocketed. Well, deliveries will skyrocket here. And this will be a change to consumers' habits. Because once you start buying online, you don't stop buying online. And once you buy a product online, you keep buying the product online, and that's happened with every cohort in the economy that's and an every product. Point, because once they have your credit card information, once you figure out how to use it, once it gets easier. So who is that good news for? They, that's I mean, really good news if you're Amazon. It's really good news if you're Walmart. It's really good news if you're Target, and it's really good news if you're Costco. All the same people, right? They've got the supply chains. They've got the databases. They've got the delivery capability. They can make it all happen. <laughs> so for people who are less strong, if you will, in the ability to deliver the product to the customer, they're going to lose.